Hi, today's video is about the headstock bearings. Uh, there's lots to do here and I hope it doesn't get too tedious, but there's uh, some challenging bits. Let's get started with the outboard bearing. The outboard bearing is a straight cylindrical fit onto the shaft, but the OD is tapered and it fits into a tapered hole in the headstock. Uh, it's a bit like a collet in that it's slit so it can be closed in or expanded and one of the slits goes all the way through and gets a small piece of metal put in it, sort of a shim, the thickness of which limits how much you can close up the bearing. My plan was, by being very careful with how much I ground off the spindle shaft, uh, to have a kind of enough adjustment left on this bearing that I'd be able to lap it and then have it st still close in and form a proper fit on the spindle shaft. To lap the bearing, I was going to hold it in the headstock and do a little bit of engineering to determine the thickness of the uh, of the shim on the bearing close-in given the new diameter of the uh, the spindle shaft such that if I clamped the bearing tightly in the headstock and then lapped it I'd end up with the right uh, ID on the bearing. I was able to reuse the lap that I made for the tailstock however I replaced the copper on it and also added a universal joint so I could use it with a drill. The white sheet is just drawing that I spread out on the bench to try to contain the mess and uh, things work quite well although it was messy. Now with a really good finish and presumably a straight and round bore we need to figure out exactly what direction that bore is going in because there's no control over that with the lapping. I thought I'd be able to get away with it because I thought lapping wouldn't alter the geometry that much of the bearing and that with the bearing tightened up and using the shaft surface as a guide, I'd be able to spot and scrape the uh, double taper at the other end of the shaft. I'll come back to that, but I want to prepare the headstock inboard bearing now, the double taper one. And what I chose to use was a nice big piece of bearing bronze. A number, number of thoughts went into that as opposed to trying to make one out of hardened steel like the original. Uh, first of all, many of the Shoblin 70s did have bronze headstock bearings so it's not like it's a inappropriate way to come at it or that it won't last. Clean and oiled it should last indefinitely and the other reason was to get a really great fit on the double taper uh, mating I thought that I probably would have to end up relying on scraping for part of the fitting process something would be impossible to do with hardened steel. Work starts with careful measurement of the original bearing I wanted to get the perfect shovel and fit on the press of the bearing into the headstock uh, so there's no better way to do this than with an indicating mic set to gauge blocks. I also checked the taper that was ground onto the shaft. Interference fits need a fair bit of precision so I used the indicating mic again and set up my poor man's DRO. I never really felt the need for a DRO on a lathe but there's lots of times when you want to get more accuracy than is possible on the in-feed dial on the cross slide. What I do is I attach this digital indicator to my cross slide and find that it's just perfect. It's a tense digital indicator so it gives lots of accuracy and of course it's easy to switch between inch and metric. After turning I drilled out for the oil passage and then I ground the other end of the bearing holding it in a v-block. Any force on the uh, the work pulling it out of the headstock is taken up by this surface and a, a washer that goes between it and the pulley. The fit between the shaft and the bearing seemed to be pretty good so I went and pressed the bearing into the headstock. I thought about supporting things for the press but it uh, measured and the interference fit was so minor and the casting pretty sturdy that uh, I was able to do it without busting anything. As mentioned earlier, at this point we really don't know what the true axis of the outboard bearing is. But I thought I'd be able to use it as a guide on the shaft and then the shaft to spot the inboard bearing to scrape it into a perfect fit. Well, it turns out I wasn't so lucky. The shaft position relative to the inboard bearing was way off. So what to do? I started by grinding a shaft that was a very careful fit to the outboard bearing so that I could tighten that bearing up on it and it would rigidly hold the shaft. By measuring end to end with the shaft held firmly in the outboard bearing I was able to get a sense as to how much my lapping of the bearing had pushed things out. It, it was out, definitely out as I expected it would be, but it was only about a thou. 
was uh, just did not explain how misaligned the shaft was to the uh, inboard bearing. The only uh, the only thing I could come up with the conclusion was that the headstock main inboard bearing was uh, turned or bored after it was installed in the casting. I'll spare you the drudgery of the uh, dismal task of having to redo all of this work. In the photo above you can see I've uh, returned the inboard bearing, pressed it into the headstock, but I've only roughed out the ID to just clear the test bar. If you look at the right side, there's a huge gap between the bearing and the test bar. Obviously a lot more than a thou that I measured the test bar being out. Uh, it means that I have to do a turn and bore this bearing in situ in the casting relative to the uh, bearing, the outboard bearing. What I came up with is a scheme to develop a fixture that would bolt on the faceplate of my lathe. Being a steel fabrication is for sure not going to be accurate, but I came up with a way to uh, adjust things in the two planes so that if I could get this fixture bolted onto my faceplate securely, I could then uh, very carefully align the good outboard bearing with the lathe's axis. I thought to use the headstock's uh, cam lock holes to, as a way to secure it to the base plate. Basically uh, there's a couple of rods here that uh, tie into pins as you can see in the photo and then this uh, gets threaded and bolted to the fixture. I didn't do much more than just tack it together. That's all that was needed for strength and we're ready to try it on the lathe. Alignment's quite tricky and I want to get it as close to a tenth as possible in two planes. I'm going to do a short little sidebar here on this alignment device. Uh, it's a thing I came up with, kind of my version of a Kingway alignment tool. It's used uh, for scraping and machine tool alignment. If you have three planes that are, you know are good, you can run this tool along it and indicate other surfaces. Uh, there's lots of improvements to the original Kingway, one of which being uh, a spindle that I made. It's uh, basically a small spindle made with a couple of ABEX 7 angular contact bearings, and it's used to hold an indicator so that you can sweep surfaces. This can be really advantageous in lots of different scenarios where you want to sweep a surface at point A and then move the device along uh, uh, the machine ways and sweep again at point B. With a round piece of work you don't, that you don't know how it's aligned, it's just not accurate to drag the indicator needle, needle along uh, the work as you move the carriage of the lathe, say. Whereas if you sweep in two points, you're getting a pretty definitive difference between the two. Okay, how this works. We've got the ground very accurate test bar locked into place in the outboard bearing and it's our reference to get, uh, we want to get that perfectly aligned to the lathe's axis. And we do so by using the indicator mounted on this little uh, spindle on the alignment device to sweep the surface. First we move the device to position A, uh, sweep the top of the, the shaft, and then we move the device to position B and sweep the top of the shaft. If we carefully shim in that plane, we should be able to get these readings to zero out, and then we know we're in alignment in that, uh, that plane. Rotate the work 90 degrees and repeat the process. It lets you do each plane individually, which I think is a lot less frustrating when you're trying to achieve alignment via shims, uh, like in this case. Of course, you still have to revolve the work to uh, ensure there's concentricity. This is mainly a technique to get things uh, aligned in two planes. Here, for example, I'm uh, sweeping position A, and here I'm sweeping position B. A good selection of loose shims is uh, pretty important for doing this. And in this photograph, you can see the shims in one plane. On the other side of the headstock, there's a lip that abuts to the front of the bed, and I've got this aligned with or abutting against the edge of the plate that the headstock's bolted to. The idea being that if I get it aligned in the direction or in the plane as shown in the photograph, these shims should stay in place when I subsequently go and start shimming between the lip on the headstock and the side of the plate. That's the 10 minute mark, so I'm going to wrap it up there for this video. Next time we'll machine the bearing.
and work on the spindle shafts fit. Thanks very much for tuning in. Bye for now.